Okay, so iOS 15 is finally here, and you want to know what's changed. And no, there aren't any interruptions or anything crazy like a rearranged home screen or a brand new U2 album. I'm taking you through the largest, most impactful updates of iOS 15, and my personal favorites through testing this software for the past couple of months. The first is that drag and drop now works on iPhone. Simply press and hold something to pick it up, and then use the other finger to switch between apps, and you can drop it in. This works with photos, links, text, or really anything else that you want to copy and paste. In my experience, this is a little awkward to get used to, but once you do get used to it, it's kind of a cool feature to have. This year, Apple spent a lot of time developing brand new communication features for the iPhone, which makes sense because after all, it is a phone. This includes new FaceTime and calling features, starting with meeting links. Now when opening FaceTime, you have the option to start a new meeting or create a link for that meeting. When creating a link, you can rename that meeting, but can't set a start or stop time for that meeting. This means that you can't really schedule it, and I'm hoping it's something that's coming in a later update. Still, you can share the link with any device and access it from the FaceTime app or through the browser if you want to join from, say, an Android or a Windows device. And when you're in a call, you also have a few notable improvements. The first being portrait mode option that allows you to blur the background when on video, which makes it look a lot more crisp than it did before. They've also made improvements to the audio with the option to isolate voice to tune out the background as well as the introduction of spatial audio within FaceTime calls. And that's going to give you a much fuller sound than you currently have on your iPhone. So all of these features lead to a more enjoyable experience with your phone. But to make it even better, they've included a new feature called SharePlay, which is really a play on AirPlay. And just like it sounds, it allows you to share everything while on a FaceTime call. Now this includes watching a movie or listening to music or playing games or even sharing your screen. And if you're like me, things just got a lot easier to help your friends and family with their tech problems remotely. Now this all works very similar to AirPlay, and while you're on a FaceTime call, you can simply hit the share button or start playing music, and it'll automatically become part of your call. Next, we have changes to messages, starting with shared with you. So obviously people are gonna send you recommendations from music to podcasts to videos to links. Now it's much easier to see those recommendations when they matter most. Apple has now compiled all of these links into the app that they're regarding. Say someone sent you a link recommendation, well, that'll show on Safari with a new shared with you tab. Or say somebody sent you a podcast, well, you guessed it, you'll be able to see it in the podcast app. Or when you're watching TV, open the Apple TV app and you'll see the shared with you section. As of now, this extends to most of Apple's apps from Apple TV, podcast, music, Safari, and it'll be interesting to see how third-party developers implement this as well. Another welcome improvement to messages is the new photo collections. And this is actually, believe it or not, one of my favorite things about iOS 15. So if you're in a conversation and somebody sends you multiple photos, these photos will now stack together into what they're calling a collection. Now you can expand it and see all of them. You can swipe between the photos. And you can also hit the save button to immediately save all of them instead of saving them one by one. It's one of those features that you kind of wonder why it wasn't a thing before, but it makes perfect sense now. This new set of features allows you to maintain better focus on the task at hand, and that's called focus modes. It's essentially a brand new version of Do Not Disturb, which allows you to get certain notifications at certain times. Say you're working and you wanna hide personal notifications, but it also allows you to hide certain home screens based on these modes showing only what you want to see when you want to see it. Originally, I didn't care about this feature until I realized that I could limit those home screens, essentially changing the purpose of my phone at those specific times. Additional features include the ability to hide notifications from specific people based on these modes and showing that your phone is set to focus mode, telling them the message is delivered quietly and enabling them to notify you anyway if necessary. Now, speaking of notifications, they also have a redesigned look featuring a larger icon and bolder text, which is just nicer overall. Safari also had one of the largest redesigns we've ever seen with a new tab bar moved to the bottom of the screen. The bar holds the URL, tab button, and a more button, which has all the actions like add to favorites, add bookmark, share, and more. The tab bar supports swiping between pages, much like swiping between apps with the home bar. Pulling up on the bar brings you to a list of all of your tabs, and once in this view, you can view all tabs, 
or create a tab group, which allows you to group a bunch of web pages together and open them all at once. The tab groups area is also where you would now access the private browsing. It's also worth noting that like on a Mac, you can now customize the start page by simply turning on and off the sections that you don't want. And you can also add a wallpaper to the start page. Lastly, Safari on iPhone now supports Safari extensions, much like on Mac. So it'll be interesting to see some of these new extensions that are coming up. Now the camera also has some brand new improvements that I think people are gonna use quite often. And that includes the ability to read live text. Simply point the camera at text, and once you tap on it, this has a variety of uses. For example, if it's text, you can copy and paste that into something else right from the camera app. If it's a phone number, you can automatically tap and call immediately. And if it's another language, you can do a live translation on the spot with just a tap. So these are really very powerful features that I think are gonna be a hit once people know how to use them. And it's also worth noting that these live text features also extend to your existing photos in the Photos app. So that means if you've taken a previous photo of text, you're gonna be able to copy and select that text even if you took it before iOS 15. And likewise, this is gonna pull into search, meaning if there's specific text in the image, if you search for it on your iPhone, that image is gonna come up. So this is gonna to lead to much more rich and much more powerful searching for the photos in your Photos app. In my experience, this has worked really well and something that I used to have on Google Photos, and I'm glad that it works so well now in Apple Photos. Lastly, it's worth noting that Siri has made some performance improvements as well, now processing a bunch of popular commands on the device without even hitting the network, as well as noticeable improvements to the speed of those requests when you're asking it to do something common. Now, there's a lot of other minor improvements like a redesigned weather app, memory mixes in the Photos app, grid mode in FaceTime, and many more, which I'll cover in a later video. So if you wanna see much larger amounts of features happening in iOS 15, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay in touch with that. Now, in terms of compatibility, iOS 15 is compatible with all of the following devices, iPhone 6S and iPod Touch 7th generation, and all the way up to the current models. Let me know in the comments which of these features that we've covered today is your favorite and which one you're gonna be using as soon as you install iOS 15. Leave your vote in the comments now. While you're down there, remember to hit the like button because it tells YouTube that videos like this don't suck and hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this from me. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel and I'll see you in the next one.